All right. This argument that the spread of fascism and white supremacy across the globe is the product of economics um, is insufficient. It's incomplete. Before I go any further than that, we should still destroy neoliberalism. Right. You know, my economic policies don't change. We we socialism will win. You know, whatever cliche needs you need to hear to help you understand that my economics have not changed whatsoever. But it is woefully insufficient to understand the the spread. It is two things. It's woefully insufficient, but it is also classes in and of itself to under, try to understand the spread of fascism and, and the spread of white supremacy or the resurgence and the renaissance of white supremacy because it never went anywhere um, through the lens of economic anxiety. It is insufficient. And it, it is itself classist. Because the people who are doing the spreading, the people who are embracing it, the people who are loving this, this, this rise in Donald Trump, they're, they're economically better off than most of us combined. Yet, we have people on the left who want us to only talk about economic ex, uh, anxiety or, or they want that to be the primary thing or at a minimum, you have people on the left who literally, who, who, whose job, who, people with platforms whose job appears to be to jump in every one of every black person's mentions, to jump in our mentions, to try to chastise us when we talk about the racial component of this. And to all of you, you're classist. You know why? Because you are casting, you're trying to frame this conversation about the problem of white supremacy as only being an issue of the working class. When it's clear that it is an issue of the wealthy. And so why would you try to limit our understanding or the conversation and the discourse around the rise of fascism and the renaissance of white supremacy as being a, a, a paradigm of economic anxiety? Because doing that by 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 insisting that it is a it is the product of economic anxiety, you're saying that the problem really only exists with poor people. When that's clearly not the case, this is a Brooks Brothers renaissance of white supremacy. This is the Amber Combi and Fitch. This is the you know Martha's Vineyards on the on the on the weekend going out to the to the Cape. You know these are the people who are reveling. This is a game to them. This is fun to them. I, I mean, I, I really question how much real interaction you've had with, with different, very, different levels of racist. I mean, I've dealt with the working class bloke who was racist. And I've dealt with the millionaires who are racist. And you know what I found? I found that the millionaires just get some perverse pleasure out of these games. It, 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 it's like you wonder and you try to understand what drives a person to be a big game hunter. And you, you just can't quite understand that that level of, of, of derangement that would drive someone to get pleasure out of killing animals. For fun and for sport, it's that same type of derangement that it's hard to understand. But it exists and is highly concentrated in the wealthy. And the upper middle class, white college kids on going to some of the best schools in this country. And yet we insist on using the economic exploitation or rather the economic anxiety model to understand this and to more importantly to address this. But there's no amount of safety nets that are going that's, that's going to stop the Mercers from being uh, 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 open and out fascist and supporting fascism. That there's it's <clears throat> so the framing is wrong. I, I I don't I want to take the the sound of uh, exasperation out of my voice. The framing is wrong, but it's it's self classist and in the name of not being classist, which is totally weird, you know. And and and, and you know what it is? It's reactionary. It, it's really it's like reactionary a, a, a reactionary class critique because you're doing this in reaction to uh, liberals 
who generally dismiss the poor as racist and don't themselves point out the racists that are in their neighborhood, the fast fascists that are in their neighborhood. And so in reaction to that, you've created this insistence, this 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 mode of understanding racism and the spread of white supremacy. You 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 framed it, you know, so so ardently as being in a product of economic anxiety. When in reality, that's just a that's a small component of it. The real threat is coming from the upper class and the middle class uh, white supremacists who get get shits and giggles out of this. That that's the real problem. And and by insisting on this framework of economic anxiety, not only are you classes, but you, not only are you uh, uh, giving an incomplete analysis, but it is also taking all of the heat it, it, not only heat away from this current administration that is that is benefiting from white supremacy, but it's it's almost like a tacit approval. It's it, it's it fits perfectly into the anti anti Trump paradigm. It fits perfectly into the mode of uh, a, a more reactionary politics from the left that is seeking to uh, reject the resistance more than they are, they want to reject the white supremacy of Donald Trump. It's it's the utmost importance that we fight the resistance. Right. That's that's an entire brand of leftism that is out there right now. All of it. And, and, and the next question that comes is, well, Ben, why are you punching to the left? Because people are dying. That's no hyperbole. Literally being murdered. In houses of worship. By conservatives. Who are being driven not by economic anxiety. They're being driven by their sheer embrace of hatred in the form of white supremacy, Islamophobia, and anti-Semitism. And that's why I put the urgency of now. You gotta, what, what good are you if you don't address the urgency of right now? I went to my church yesterday and, and drove up and there was a um, security guard had his, uh, you know, lights flashing on his car and armed in front of our church. Yeah, I was grateful. I was, I was glad. Because, I mean, at a minimum, they know if they're coming in there that they're going to have some opposition. And I'm sure there's, there are synagogues across the country that did the same thing uh, or, or will do the same thing on the coming Shabbat. I'm sure they're, they're uh, mosques across the country that are going to do the same thing because we all literally face the same threat of death at the hands of people who are driven by hate. And that hate, while you're taking time to try to understand it as a, as, as you know, an under, uh, understand it from an economic anxiety perspective, they were poor and, and, and they were driven to this madness. That hate, that, 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 that hate can also be understood as a game. That hatred is a game to them. They like it. They do it to own the libs. They do it to get cred in their circles. They do it because, and and, uh, here's another way of understanding this. And and, and sociologists, you guys just point me to all the authors who already said all these things a million times over as I'm thinking of it off the top of my head. I'm sure this is not original, but, but another way of understanding this is that they have their own communities. They have communities in which they are rewarded for their hatred. And you're thinking that you could lure them away from those communities that have their own rewards with economic safety nets. When in reality, that reward that that gives them the sense of satisfaction and sense of owning uh, of belonging, that reward from their community is far greater than any safety net that you could ever give them. <laughs> Please, I, I really do want somebody to just point me to the book that I can I can read about that on. It just it just came to me, but I know that there's at least uh, thirty dozen books out there of scholarship that would compare the reward of a community that embraces them versus some type of some type of a tangible reward on the other side, some type of material reward on the other side. That's a huge component, right? You, you, just, you don't understand. They have communities. They're not alone. 
they're not alone and, and isolated because, you know, they, they have a, an, an entire world that is provided to them by billionaires who are themselves fascist. So the question is, is if you're not going to understand the framing of what drives a person to invest billions of dollars in spreading fascism, you know, here's 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 the last thing about it. I don't think people who insist on economic anxiety being the primary frame through which we understand the spread of white supremacy. I don't think you understand. um, Rather, I don't think you believe in true believers of white supremacy and true believers of fascism and Nazism. Because if you, if you truly understood that some of these people made conscious decisions to embrace this rather than reject this, not because they needed someone to scape, not only because they needed someone to scapegoat for their economic hardships, but because they truly believed this stuff. They hear it and it resonates with them. So not only do they have a community that they are rewarded in and and rewarded by and they are elevated and amplified and they get an entire support group that that confirms that they are to them doing the right thing. But at that decision point, they truly believed what they heard instead of rejected what they heard. Now, if there's anything, if there's absolutely anything That transcends the conversation of race versus class, right? That we can do to honestly fight the spread of white supremacy and Nazism and fascism is to get to them first. It's to get to them first. That's that's probably that's like probably the only thing that could supersede everything that I've argued today. Because people are economically anxious and and they're making different decisions. And we need to understand why they're making different decisions. Why? Why are some poor people from Alabama who who have five dollars in their bank account and don't even have a bank account? I I don't having to go to the check cashing store, having to use an old credit card that they had to manage to keep open using that last dollar on the credit card to fill up their tank. To fifty dollars, and, and they're just going to eat up the overdraft fees, and they're going to eat up the the the. You know, I'm explaining this because I have very intimate knowledge of this type of struggle. But but we need to understand why those people who are as econo- who are more economically anxious than the rich, than the middle class, than all these people who get enjoyment out out of, out of the racism and for shits and giggles. Why is it that that we made decisions? differently part of it could be because what we were exposed to first it it it, that is a very strong part but i don't hear anybody making that case i think sam cedar might be making that case and he's making the case through the sense of we have to have progressive uh platforms we have to have platforms to reach these people like conservatives have platforms to reach it but i don't hear i don't hear the people who are attacking me because i'm letting you know that we're dealing in an era the renaissance of white supremacy the people who are com- coming after me and saying i'm i'm a race reductionist which is a, the, the stupidest shit i've ever heard in my life race reduction is my ass look at what's happened in this past week but 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 those of you you're not making the argument that we need to get to them at a younger age and we need to get to them sooner you're saying that if we just fix the economy, it's going to get rid of this. And I'm saying no, because there are plenty of rich people who are getting pure sadistic enjoyment out of this. And then there are plenty of poor people who are making the exact opposite decision. And instead of embracing fascism, they're fighting it with their lives. So your theory is incomplete. Your theory is incomplete. It's woefully insufficient in understanding the spread, but it is grossly tone deaf. And at a time when we're seeing people dying, being killed. And I don't, fine, I agree. Trump is a symptom. But holy hell, if we didn't got to, we've got to treat the symptoms first. Because there are symptoms that will kill you. And they will kill you faster than any underlying condition. 
that's it for today. It's been a long episode. Um, the full podcast is up for patrons. You can get it in one place. Go to patreon.com to hear it all in one podcast. Um, but yeah. We are living in a renaissance of white supremacy, anti-Semitism, and, and the spread of fascism. And it's incomplete to understand it through the lens of economic anxiety. It is a component. It has always been a component. M- more importantly, not only is it a component, but the economic solutions to economic anxiety are things that we should just do anyway. Things that I have always advocated for because I've been poor most of my life. I advocate, I, I advocate for it because I don't, want my, I don't want people to have to go through what I went through. But it is incomplete, insufficient in understanding the rise in the renaissance of white supremacy, anti-Semitism, and the spread of fascism globally. Because there's plenty of people who are on welfare, like need Medicaid to survive, who just as soon go and punch a Nazi long before they would ever become a Nazi. And I think if you took time to understand them, which you're not doing, you're infantilizing them. But if you took the time to understand them and ask them questions, then maybe you would understand Leave it with a cliffhanger. See you tomorrow. The Benjamin Dixon Show is only possible with listener support. Go to www.thebenjamindixonshow.com to register for our blog and join the Progressive Army. Thank you.